The To Die For Daily Podcast is brought to you by R is for Revenge Dress, written by Kinsey Schofield and published by Post Hill Press. R is for Revenge Dress explores the celebrated life of Princess Diana through the alphabet, hitting bookshelves November of 2022. Pre-order R is for Revenge Dress at Amazon or Barnes & Noble today. Love the British monarchy. You've come to the right place. Welcome to the To Die For Daily Podcast with Kinsey Schofield. Take it away, Kinsey. Hi, guys. Kinsey Schofield here with the To Die For Daily Podcast. I'm with Christopher Melcher. He is a California-based divorce attorney, and I know that you recognize his face because who was not a Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial watcher? Royal watchers converted very quickly to trial watchers over the last few months. Christopher, you were my go-to source for the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial because you were so straightforward, so honest, and I love the way you explain things to us. So thank you so much for talking to me today. Well, thanks, Kinsey, for having me and for that compliment because that is that is my goal. This is a hobby of mine. I'm a practicing lawyer, but I do enjoy legal commentary and just taking these kind of obscure legal cases and concepts and putting them into plain English, but always fact-based. Absolutely. And I've got a doozy for you. Um, I'm going to tell you what I think is happening with Samantha Markle and Meghan Markle, and I want you to correct me. Is that all right? Sure. Okay. So what I think is going on is Samantha Markle, Meghan Markle's older half-sister, is suing Meghan because she believes that Meghan lied about her during the Oprah Winfrey in interview and the book Finding Freedom. And Samantha claims that with Megan lying about her, it has hurt her financially to the tune of $75,000, which I have a hard time believing. But is that correct that she feels like this has hurt her financially, so she wants to punish her sister financially? That's exactly what she's claiming in the lawsuit. So in if you just look at at the paperwork, you you get each side's story, but then we also do have to kind of zoom out a little bit and figure out what is really driving these legal disputes. And to me, the, the I mean, any legal dispute is is terrible for somebody to go through, but when you have family members going to court or spouses going to court, it's it's just so destructive, and you kind of wonder like, is that worth it? Now, on paper, it's exactly right what you said is that Samantha claims that there were statements made in this book, Finding Freedom, that Megan didn't write. I know she has her fingerprints on it, basically, but she did not write that book. And there were statements in there about um, really the two not being very close and that um, Samantha was willing to sell any information she had about Megan to the media. And then during an Oprah Winfrey interview, that Megan made similar statements about not being close to Samantha and that Samantha changed her name back to Markle only after Megan started dating or having a relationship with Harry. And the implication is, is that she's just doing this for publicity or to sell information. So Samantha's saying that those statements are defamatory. Now, under law, you have to show that the statements are, number one, false, and number two are really statements of fact, not really opinion, is not really actionable. So false statements of fact of or concerning Samantha that caused her to suffer damages. And so we'll go into the details on that, and that's where the case kind of honestly starts falling apart. <laughs> um, but that's, that's the overview of the legal landscape of, of what's happening in court. And with the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial, I know that we were dealing with big, big money. I mean, ungodly amounts of money in that in that trial. But <clears throat> it did feel like Johnny Depp was doing it to prove his, to prove him, him, himself and reputation. Like he wanted to save his reputation. And this is where it gets iffy with Samantha because Johnny Depp had at least thirty years as a working actor. He, we, the, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise is so huge. You know, we would, we see him on rides at Disneyland. There is such a clear uh, existence of his life before these statements or before the Washington Post um, article came out. There was a clear record of success. We don't really have that with Samantha. Is Samantha 
you know, does it feel like this is a case that she's just trying to quickly cash out, which I do believe Meghan Markle's team has suggested? Or do you think that this is a, try, a woman trying to save her reputation through the court system, similar to Depp? Well, that's, I think, how Samantha wants to portray herself, well, that her, her narrative is, is that I am this stepsister that is hurt by Megan's attempt to recast history and to basically harming my reputation so that this information that I've been sharing about her won't be deemed credible. So ah. it's like a counterattack is ah. what, what Samantha's saying is, is that Megan is so conniving that she's spreading all this false information out there in the media about Samantha so that Samantha's statements aren't believed. So, um, but the problem is, is that when you look at what others are saying about Samantha, that she is selling information to the media for, you know, stories about Megan. And this has become her basic way of making a living. Uh, Piers Morgan has, was uh, on, there's a video circulating on, on Twitter of where Piers Morgan has said, I just finished interviewing Samantha. We paid her for the interview. And this is what she does. She basically sells dirt about Megan. Um, and then Samantha was also interviewed um, on another channel where where she admitted like, yeah, I'm, I'm basically cashing in. There was words used by her cashing in on this. So the story by by Samantha doesn't really fit the facts. So her saying like, hey, I'm just out here living my life as Samantha and all of a sudden I'm dragged into this big controversy that my sister's involved in and my sister is worried about me expressing the truth so she's now trying to harm my reputation. If, if Samantha had left a quiet life and never put herself in the spotlight, I would have sympathy for that. Um, but she did not do that. She went and tried to publicize herself and made her living off of selling dirt about Megan. So having some dirt thrown back at her seems like fair play to me. Christopher, it's the American dream. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, the, this is so interesting, though, because, you know, Megan, um, Megan Markle is kind of a polarizing figure in the United States. But when we look at the evidence that's going to that we expect to be presented, if it actually gets to court, which is a question I should ask, will it ever get to court? Um, you know, uh, Samantha does not have the strongest case here. It, will it go to court? Yeah, so this is this is important when we look at these stories. Um, you know, Depp heard Britney Spears versus Jamie Spears, all cases that we've followed. Um, you know, there's like the the villain. You know, and and so there's this good person, the victim, and then there's the villain involved. And you know, we we like stories like that. They're very easily understood, um, but they also lack nuance. And so when we get into the story a little bit deeper, we're seeing that some people rallying around the 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 favored party in the case without doing any real analysis on whether this so-called villain is such a bad person or whether there's any fault at, to be shared. So when I'm looking at this as a lawyer, when I looked at the court file, because I wanted to understand this case, so I looked at every piece of paper that's filed here. This thing is a disaster. Um, Samantha's attorney bailed on the case very early on. And to get out of a case as a lawyer, you have to have permission from the client uh, or permission from the court. And so here, this lawyer wanted out, Samantha wouldn't give consent. So that means to me as a lawyer, it's like Samantha's not the one dissatisfied with the lawyer. If she was, she would just fire the lawyer and hire somebody else. She would consent. She would say, I want you out of my case. Yeah. But here, the, it was the lawyer who wanted out and Samantha saying no. In an early stage of the case, that shows a huge problem between the two in that relationship. So the court eventually allowed the lawyer out and new lawyer steps in. And like a week later, Samantha files a motion to disqualify the judge. <laughs> and so that tells me that was probably the source of the conflict. This first lawyer saying, I'm not doing that. Wow. And so the second lawyer does. And the basis of the motion is, is that the this is a federal judge appointed by President Obama 13 years earlier could not be impartial in the case because Meghan and Harry had been photographed 
with the Obamas, and so they have some kind of relationship. Now, I guess Wait, on can, its face, I, you might can think like... I quickly like, interrupt you? Yeah. Didn't, didn't that same judge refuse to throw out the case when Meghan Markle requested earlier to have the case tossed? So, so you know, it looked kind of like the judge was siding with Samantha initially. So why would you go and then try to have that person tossed? It, it's, it's insane, okay? Because, you know, even though I can understand you know, in a very attenuated way, like, okay, Obama appointed this judge and Obama knows Megan, that maybe there would be some concerns there, but you have to have the goods. If you go after the judge, you got, you better win because yeah. if you misfire and Ooh. the judge rejects it, you're done, you're done for. So that's why no, no rational attorney would, would say like, we're going to attack the judge unless you're pretty sure you're going to get, win this disqualification. So the judge responded as he was required to and saying like, look, I've never met Obama. Yeah, the guy appointed me 13 years ago, but I've never met the man. I have nothing to do with them. It, it makes no difference at all to me. And no, no reasonable person looking at this would think that I'm going to be influenced by it and denied it. So again, right there just tells me a huge problem. So where they're at in the case right now is that she had to amend or she decided to amend her complaint. So, you know, anyone can sue anyone for anything, right? If you got a computer, you just type this stuff up and file it with the court. So she's on round two and she's refined her allegations. And Megan is saying that these allegations are not sufficient, even if they were true, even if this whole story that Samantha is saying is true, it does not amount to a legal case because the statements, number one, mostly were not even made by Megan, were made by the authors mm -hmm. of this book, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. So she's disavowing any of the statements other than one she made on Oprah. And she's saying even if all these statements were attributed to me, they're, they're number one, true, which now is not defamatory. And, and even if they were false, they're statements really of my opinion about my relationship with my sister, which aren't actionable. So the whole thing should be tossed. The judge will review that. Uh, the preference is to allow cases to go forward on their merits. So the judge might dismiss some parts of her claim and saying, yeah, we're not gonna go there. And, but it'll, you know, potentially will go to trial. My, my concern about it is that um, this gives a way, a platform for Samantha to continue to exploit the relationship that she has with Megan because, well, look, we're talking about it. Yeah. And so other people are going to talk about it, gets her in the news. She does some interviews. She makes some money. She can also use the power of the court to subpoena information. And she already has some good emails that we'll talk about that are attached to this complaint. So she can use that to extract information from Megan and then publicize that and sell that. So I kind of went back to your question, which was, seems like a long time ago. Um, <laughs> what, what's driving this? I don't think it's the 75 grand that she claims she's out. I think it's her way of keeping relevant and to have information that she can sell to the media about Megan. Well, in relation to what you just said, I did see Prince Harry mentioned in the documents. Can she pull him in? Can he be? Can he be questioned? Or um, can he? Would he be put on the stand? That's really. That's a really scary thought to think about. Yeah, he can. I mean, this is a United States action, and Harry is in the U.S. And he, if he has information that's relevant to these allegations, he can be brought into it. Um, there were emails, and so this that that are that are relevant here and and make Megan look bad. And so one criticism I do have for Megan here is the way that she has portrayed this book, Finding Freedom, yes. as having nothing to do with her. Their whole case, if you read her legal papers, is like, hey, that book was not written by me. I know my sis half sister Samantha was mentioned in the book. There's a whole chapter about her actually. Yeah. Um, but I didn't write the book. So if you got a problem, go to the authors, not me. Well, the problem is, is that there's email communications. Um, it was her assistant, and I'm drawing a blank on the gentleman's name, but he's he's it's gotten Jason quite a, something. I yeah, Jason. Yeah. Yeah, Kauf or something like that, and he's yeah. got quite a bit of attention. That he was the assistant here to Megan, and um, that Megan had told her assistant, like, "Hey, I know this book's being written, 
I want to make sure that they have the proper background and messaging here that I want to get out. Mm -hmm. And there's parts about the sister. And so she, Megan writes that, sends it to the assistant, and the assistant sends it to the author. And I believe that Harry had emailed saying, yes, this is something that we want out there. So, you know, this is, is kind of in, in journalism, we would call, you know, kind of back channel, back briefing, um, background without attribu uh, attribution. So we'll see this happening where, you know, sometimes attorneys will call the media and saying like, look, I, I got some info, don't attribute it to me. So I want to shape this story. So that's what they were doing. And they, they figured they wouldn't have their fingerprints on this, but they do because there's an email trail that shows. And when you look at the statements, it's like, I didn't have a very close relationship with Samantha and she changed her name after I started dating Harry. And these are the very statements that got put in the book the, and that are now in the Oprah interview. This is the narrative that, that Megan wanted to portray to counteract the statements, the dirt that, that Samantha was saying about Megan. So Samantha's correct that this happened and um, Megan should have just acknowledged it and said like, yeah, I was concerned about what my half sister was saying. I wanted this information out there. And you know what? I stand behind it. It's true. Rather now, than saying, could, no, could I didn't that, make that statement. Could that be the smoking gun in a, in a trial? Or is it not because we've heard about it? And Well, it's out there, yeah, because Samantha attached the emails to her complaint. So we have those. And she might have shot her, her bullet. You know, yeah. I mean, she may not have any more information. But if the case is allowed to proceed in federal court, she will have this right to subpoena information, get more emails, get you know interviews under oath with folks and develop more information. Um, and who knows if there's anything out there. But the, 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 that, that's the ding that I have on Megan uh, is that, you know, hey, if you did something, just own it. And you know, if it was wrong, then acknowledge it. But if it's not wrong, then, then it's like there's nothing to be ashamed about. But most people get in trouble for lying about something that they didn't need to lie about. And you that's mean, kind of are, what are you seeing. talking about pledged versus yeah. donated? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Just say that's absolutely I'm right. going to give it eventually. Don't have to say you did it. Um, yeah, I think you're right though. This uh, with 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 this trial, a uh, potential trial I should say, with this case, it is it's not like there is a clear villain because both it's just kind of yucky it just feels like hurt feelings and maybe it shouldn't be brought uh, in front of the whole world is this one of those cases where a judge would make all the decisions or would there be jurors well that's that's this initial stage uh that they're going through in megan's motion to dismiss is saying that hey all these allegations don't amount to a legal case judge throw it out and the judge may pare it down. I don't think the judge could throw it out because there's, I mean, it, like, again, it, all you have to say is the magic words to get into the door. Mm -hmm. And the magic words are, you know, these elements of defamation, false statement made out of or concerning me um, that damaged me, caused me to suffer loss of income. So as long as she gets the, the magic words right, she gets past the motion to dismiss. Wow. And um, and then the next stage would be Megan would say, hey, uh, now that we've um, exchanged our information or discovery, there isn't enough. Um, there isn't any factual issue here to allow it to go forth to a trial that I should just be given judgment immediately in my favor. And Megan would say, because the facts aren't there to allow it to go forth to trial. So she'll have that opportunity. And then if the judge denies that, then it would go to trial. But um, I, I think that there, the Samantha is probably in no hurry to get to trial because she likely would lose there. And the longer the case goes on, the more information she can try and develop and, and use this to keep in media attention. Wow. Um, yeah, so I'm just wondering, it sounds to me like you're saying there is no reason for Meghan Markle's camp to even remotely consider pay, settling or paying for this to go away. Yeah, that, that's that's right. If you just look at it as a legal case, it's extraordinarily weak. I don't think that um, Samantha will prevail here. 
And um, I think that the appetite of paying her anything would be very low. Now, sometimes people will enter into a settlement um, because they want something else, like maybe for her to stop talking. And uh, so that could be a reason to settle is some kind of payment to um, have Samantha stop talking. But I don't see that that's really indicated here because whatever Samantha had to say, she has said now multiple times. And she's even said some things that have been untrue about Megan. So that there's not like there's anything that they're holding on to that Samantha's holding on to that could be revealed that's worth paying for silence. The only reason that, that I would think Megan would have to settle is if there is information out there that would be obtained through subpoenas, emails that would be leaked that they don't want out there, that may cause a reason for settlement, um, but only they would know if that information is out there. And again, I'm just reiterating what you said. Evidence-wise, there is not enough for Samantha to win this case. Um, you know, you don't believe there's enough evidence for Samantha to win this case, even if, and I'm just, I just want to throw this out there. Their dad has said he will testify. He, he will stand by Samantha, Samantha if it goes to court. To have the presence of their father there saying the, these statements aren't true, we do feel like she's trying to hurt our credibility um, so that she can continue on with a narrative that is false, that benefits her, that elevates her. You don't think that that would help to have the support of her father there? Well, it's hard. I mean, basically what what the, the, the categories here, there's really three categories of statements. One is, I was never very close to Samantha. So if you look at that one, it's like, well, is that really a statement of fact yeah. that you know, we can prove is false. It, and, and what Megan is saying is, no, it's a statement of opinion. Mm -hmm. Like w when you say you're close to somebody or not close to somebody, that isn't really something that we could objectively prove is true or false. It's how I feel about that. And so that is not what we call an actionable statement. So I think those, those statements, those categories is probably going to get dismissed um, and it wouldn't make it to trial because there's no way. It's not like Amber, you know, I don't bring in that whole case. But if somebody says like, hey, I was hit or I was abused. Well, it's either happened or didn't happen. Right. But when you're saying I, I wasn't really that close to my sister, I didn't see her that often. It's not something that you can really sue successfully for defamation for because it's really a statement of, of opinion. And it isn't as concrete as it needs to be. The other category is, hey, um, Samantha changed her name back to Markle after I started dating Harry. Implication, she did this for some kind of publicity reasons. Well, it's true. She did change her name. Uh, her name was Markle originally, and then it changed a couple times because she was married and, and she went back to her maiden name. Nothing wrong with that. And the sequence of events are probably pretty accurate that it happened around the time she started. So it's like that's not defamatory because it's just a true statement. She did change her, her name back. So the other category is um, that, hey, if Samantha had information about Megan, she would go and sell it. Well, that is true. I mean, uh, Samantha has admitted to that. I saw a video of her on a news story saying, yeah, I'm selling this information. I need to make a living. Yeah. So the case is is really hopelessly bad. I think if people hate Meghan Markle, they support Samantha because they figure, hey, we don't like Meghan, so anyone attacking Meghan must be good in my book. But, you know, you also have to look at Samantha's motivations here. And so to me, it's a very weak case. And, and she's off to a very rocky start with it. So I don't, I don't give it much success, but maybe she does find up with an email or something like here that through discovery and able to leak that, we may see that happen. Well, Christopher, it was such a pleasure to talk to you. You are so, you mean, every, every, the way you explain everything, the way you communicate, obviously you are very good at your job um, because I just love listening to you and I love listening to you talk about these, these crazy celebrity cases. How can people keep up with you? 
Well, if you go to Twitter, CA underscore divorce, that's my Twitter handle. I'm on there and um, I am commenting on celeb legal news stories. That's just my hobby. And so um, please reach out to me there and you'll see see threads. I'm, I'm trying to only comment when I have something to add to the story and when I'm able to do a deep dive on it. So I'm not there every day, but uh, that's where to find me. And you've got a great YouTube channel as well, right? Yeah, so I was making videos, but I, I, I've taken a break from it just because it just became too much. And yeah. so now I'm, 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 I will go back to that, but I've, I've, the tweets are so much easier for me to handle <laughs> because I've, you know, I've got my day job to attend to. I know that you're one of the real attorneys. I love when I'm like flipping through like Nancy Grace and I'm like, how does this person have time to be an attorney? They're always on Nancy Grace, but you actually work. So I am so grateful for your time today. Um, you are a, a joy to speak to. And I, I look forward to following what you do next because you really are so well spoken. And I really enjoy your commentary. So thank you so much for your time today, sir. Well, thanks. I hope to be back on the show. Thank Absolutely. you for listening to the To Die For Daily Podcast with Kinsey Schofield. A transcript of this chat is available at todiefordaily.com. Please subscribe to hear more from your favorite royal commentators. Cheers.